Hey friends, this is Dolany TV. Welcome to this season's first Beyond the Oilers edition here on the channel as we get set up to look at those Calgary Flames down the QE2 from the capital city of Alberta as they have had themselves a hot start to the year. And just uh, just want to touch on some of the things that I am seeing out of the Calgary Flames based on being a casual viewer this year as they've been uh, kind of coordinated with the Oilers somewhat this season and of course as well 880 Chad's a little harder to get down here than 630 used to be so a little bit more flames talk on the radio in the drives around the countryside I guess would be the best way to put it if you're new to the channel friends make sure to consider hitting that subscribe button flames fan Oilers fan NHL fan hockey fan aside don't care what just hey stay tuned with whatever you got going on and whatever you need from here so what we know about the Pacific Division, that's what we're going to start with here today, is the Calgary Flames here on this Sunday are leading the division, the Kings, the Ducks, and I think the uh, uh, Sharks are all in action today. So things will change by the end of tonight's uh, calendar, I guess, for the NHL today. That said, you look at the NHL right now, and the uh, Pacific Division at current is a mess. The Calgary Flames, the surprising 4-0-1 Flames, are on top of the division. The Seattle Kraken sit 4-2-0 with 8 points in 6 games. The Vegas Golden Knights with 7 points with a 3-2-1 record. Uh, Los Angeles, like I said, they can change things a little bit in terms of the division tonight. Uh, Vancouver as well sitting with 6 points in 5 games. They've started slow. They've started getting hotter over the past two. You've got the Anaheim Ducks here with a 2-1-1 one one record. They could also change things a little bit if they win. And then the Edmonton Oilers who, alongside the San Jose Sharks and the uh, Nashville Predators, among some of the five, six worst teams in the NHL this season, the Oilers are in 28th as current of this October 20th Sunday here as we get going for a new week right away. Uh, so you look at the Pacific Division, the Oilers obviously have the worst goal differential in the division. They are a 2-1, to one, so are the Sharks, but they've given up just that one extra goal against uh, in the 2-1 to one ratio, 12-24 as opposed to 11-22. And for the Oilers, yes, thankfully they've got two wins and they've been a very good team on the road compared to at home where they are 500 on the road compared to 250 at home. Home. So I want to take a moment here to touch on the Flames who, well, as we discussed, this is where this video is going. They have 20 goals for, 12 goals against. They were riding hot. They lost last night in a overtime game to the Seattle Kraken on a beautiful snipe from Jordan Everly and the three on three. And obviously the Calgary Flames are still undefeated in regulation this year. And I think as an Oilers fan, if I, I just listen enough to Flames Radio, Flames coverage as I have because of obviously the change with 880 down here in the southern part of the province where you don't get it near as clear as you once upon a time did 630 Ched which is your Oilers radio network um, yeah it's kind of really tough in the sense of you're hearing about how the Flames players are fighting for their jobs they're fighting to keep their lineup positions they're doing everything they can to earn their spot, keep their spot, and keep the team going, right? They're all pulling for each other, and they're all, they've all got the us versus everyone else mentality going on in that locker room, and it's just, as an Oilers fan, you figure coming out of a Western Conference championship year, it would be like, oh, hey, everybody's out to take us down. Let's go roll them, and that, that hasn't quite been the case for the Edmonton Oilers, who have been rather soft, I think, outside of their two victories with fighting majors. Um, they've been soft this year, whereas you watch the Calgary Flames, those guys are going out there, and everybody, line up, top to bottom contributions, and it's it's been a per perfect performance for a team that was quite honestly expected to be one of the worst teams in the NHL this season. So, you look at the Flames, 20 goals for, 12 goals against. Like You just can't argue with the fact that they are actually doing what, what any NHL team should be doing, which is even if you are a terrible team, the aim is to go out there and win every single night. And that, I think, is what the most impressive thing out of the Calgary Flames has been so far in this season is long-term, the success probably isn't there. This is a blip in history here in this season, technically speaking, for the Flames more than likely. But 
you still got to appreciate it as an NHL fan when a bad team that on paper or whatever, however you want to put it, starts faster than the supposed cup favorite. And I think, too, the argument was made there about uh, Carolina last year, too, with their goaltending struggles similar to ours and their whole mess. And for Carolina, they're kind of same situation, four points in four games. Yeah, they've kind of had some situations dictated there to them. But we've got them coming into town as Oilers fans here on the next game. And it's it's going to be one of those things where you've got some of the top teams in the NHL, like the Nashville Predators. That's another team I wanted to touch on briefly. They just can't seem to figure it out on the power play, similar to the Oilers. But I think the Oilers not figuring it out on the power play has to do with the NHL figuring out the Oilers power play. Whatever Dallas and whatever Florida exposed to the rest of the NHL in those two playoff series has circulated the rounds and the NHL has made the adjustments to the Oilers panel or power play. I think I've heard, you know, like Connor McDavid's just not getting as much ice. And when Connor McDavid doesn't get enough ice, Leon Dreisaitl's a pretty stagnant player on the power play in terms of trying to set up his scoring opportunities. You've got Bouchard. Well, if he's not blasting it past the goalie, it's either exiting the zone on a block or it's a recovery and you're wasting time. So, uh, yeah, the Nashville Predators, kind of a different situation, kind of trying to blend in Stamkos and Marsha Show to a top power play unit. And Nashville as well, technically speaking, not a team historically that has scored at great heights year in, year out. So they're trying to adapt to that as well. But already the head coach is on the hot seat and there's maybe potential that a former Oilers head coach might sneak his way into Nashville here before the month's out if the struggles continue. So, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things going on across the NHL, but the two things I really did want to talk about is just how impressive the start for the Flames has been, albeit does it hold up? That's a good question, similar to the discussion earlier today with Philip Broberg in the earlier video. And then as well, is Nashville really just going to really fall short of expectations right out of the gate here? Uh, with the new look Predators underway at an 0 5 clip. I don't know, but we'll find out. And obviously, they're, they're in the same boat we are as Oilers fan as well, needing to figure out a league or a top league power play based on who's available for the first unit. So, friends, thank you so much for being aboard here today on the Beyond the Oilers debut for the 2024 2025 NHL season here on Dolany TV. Really appreciate you hanging out with me. Like I said, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button here on Dolan TV. I'd love to have you aboard for what is going to be a fun finish to the month of October and then beyond. We'll have a lot more headlines to check out, I'm sure. Thankfully, really outside of Panarin and uh, Reinhardt, there's no one super, super running away with scoring race yet. But I feel like that will probably be our next discussion point here, whether it be next Sunday or the Sunday after. So stay tuned. We'll see what happens. But for right now, I am up on Odie here.